know what the most annoying bug in the whole world is? Definitely mosquitoes. And unfortunately, they are everywhere. Yes, yeah, seriously, everywhere. But luckily, there are a lot of creatures in this world who think mosquitoes taste delicious. Creatures like dragonflies, swallows, prey mantis, frogs, spiders, and believe it or not, hummingbirds. So a really good way to keep the mosquitoes under control is to make your backyard a good home for all those creatures to live. But there's a catch. All those creatures we just listed go to bed when the sun goes down. And that's right when all the mosquitoes come out. So what creatures should we be calling in to take the mosquito night shift? The answer is bats. Before we get started, a special thank to Bat Conservation International for helping us create this video. Did you know that one bat can eat 1,000 mosquitoes in one hour? That's like 7,000 in one night. Compare that to dragonflies, who eat about 30 bugs in a day. 30 less mosquitoes is still good, but bats are by far one of the best bug control creatures in the world. Now you might be thinking, bats are so creepy. I don't want them anywhere near me. We promise you, bats are actually really cool creatures. Bats are the only mammal that can fly. They're one of the very few creatures in the world that can echolocate, like dolphins and whales. Without bats, we would not have bananas, mangoes, or avocados. And out of the more than 1,400 bat species in the world, only three of them are vampires. The rest eat fruit, nectar, or, most important for this video, bugs. Bats are the number one nighttime bug hunters in the world. Alright, so bats are good creatures to have around, especially if you don't like mosquitoes. So now, how do we get them to come around? You can't just pick up the phone and call 1-800-BAT-CONTROL. Hello, bats, you there? I have mosquitoes. Can you come eat them, please? Yes, so be there when the sun goes down. And these are insect-eating bats, so you can't attract them by planting flowers. Like we can with bird flies and bees, right? Or can we? Insect-eating bats don't drink nectar from flowers. But, their food does. Here's a fun fact for ya. Did you know that mosquitoes are actually pollinators? It's true. Only female mosquitoes bite. And even they only bite when they're about to lay eggs. The rest of the time, mosquitoes actually drink nectar. Just like butterflies. And here's another fact. Bats don't only eat mosquitoes. They eat all kinds of bugs. And their favorite foods are actually moths and beetles. And while we've been talking about attracting bats because we want them to eat our mosquitoes, bats are actually really good to have around for anyone who has a garden. Because a lot of the moths and beetles that bats eat are actually garden pests. This is a cutworm, one of the most destructive garden pests in the world. Cutworms cost the food industry millions of dollars every year. And they're a big problem in backyard gardens too. But bats can help with that, cause cutworms are actually baby moths. And like me with a said, bats love moths. And cutworms are just one example of garden pests bats like to eat. 
don't worry. We're not trying to attract pests. They're probably already there. It's the other bugs that we're trying to attract. Because if there's enough bugs, the bats will come. And they'll eat the pest and the mosquitoes. And that's what we want. So how do we attract these bugs to our yard? Well, beetles usually eat the leaves, the stems, and the roots of the plant. So that's pretty easy. But moths can be a little pickier. Butterflies and moths are cousins, and they like a lot of the same flowers, but there are a few differences between butterflies and moth flowers. First off, butterflies are attracted to all kinds of bright colored flowers, like red, purple, pink, and orange. The moths are mostly attracted to pale colored flowers. We think that's because the paler the flower, the more it reflects the moonlight. And the easier it is to see it in the dark. Moths also like a lot of flowers that smell really good. While butterflies don't really care as much about the smell. That's also because smell makes it easier for moths to find the flowers in the dark. And one other really important thing about choosing flowers for moths is that the flowers actually have to be open at night. Did you know that some flowers close at night time? Obviously, if a flower is closed at night, it won't be much help for moths. So we want pale colored flowers that smell good and bloom at night time. So which flowers are those? Well, that depends on where you live. But luckily, it's pretty easy to look that up. And their friends at Bat Conservation International have a list of flowers that works well for most of North America. Their list is purple coneflower, goldenrod, piero, native salvia, yucca, and sunflowers. So we did a little bat flower shopping for our own garden, and this is what we found. We found some goldenrod. This one's called Yero. And this one's called the Rattlesnake Master. I love that name. We also have a few other flowers in our garden. What? So we like flowers. These flowers are good for all kinds of wildlife. And we're hoping they'll be good for bats too. There's also one other thing in our yard that's really good for bats. We have trees. Most people think of bats as always living in caves, and some of them do. But there's a lot of bats that actually roost in trees. Trees also attract a lot of bugs, and bats can eat those bugs. So having trees is really good for bats. Two other things that are good for bats is to keep your garden organic and to have a water source that's at least six feet long because bats drink when they're flying. Obviously not everyone can add that, but if there are lakes, ponds, or streams nearby, that works too. We have a few ponds close by for our bats, so we have lots of flowers, a lot of them which are good for moths, we have trees, and we have ponds nearby. So our garden should be good for bats. Only one more thing left to do. Wait till nighttime and see if there's any bats here. When bats echolocate, the sound is too high pitched for human ears to hear. So we have this. It's a bat monitor. And it lets us hear any bats that are close by and also tells us what species they are. So let's see if our bat garden is working. All right, it's nighttime. Let's go lights out. Time to see if there's actually any bats out here. All we have to do is hang out and wait for the bats. I found a bat! Oh, it's a little brown bat. That means we have reached one species here. Our garden's working! That is awesome. Each one of those little check mark symbols is a bat call. And the sound is the bat's echolocation. We definitely have bats here. I think we got another one. 
I think we got another bat. This one's an evening bat. That's two. <laughs> we found two species here tonight, and there could be others that just didn't show up tonight. We are officially helping our local bats, and you can do the same. All right, well, that finish up this video. That gardening work. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Until next time, good night.